How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Data here and welcome back to the Vancouver Canucks franchise mode here on NHL 24, episode number 20, moving into our Stanley Cup offseason, the 2028 draft and offseason. It is set to be a wild one, so buckle up. In the last one, we finished off our fifth year here in Vancouver as Stanley Cup champions. It was one of my favorite runs in channel history as we just squeaked into the postseason via a tiebreaker. Then in round number one, we shot the world, taking down the Oilers in a seven game series. Then we swept the Ducks, took down the Avalanche in six, and in a Stanley Cup final that was between the Hughes brothers, we defeated the Devils in a five game series. We had great storylines in the last one. Mark Stone, who we acquired around the halfway point, won the Con Smythe with 30 points in 22 games, but other ridiculous storylines like Rocket Ratu, who has scored 18 goals in 22 games. But I think the biggest storyline of them all had to go to Hunter Jones. We had picked him up just in case of injury to Casey DeSmith, and DeSmith did indeed get injured. Down the stretch in the regular season, he went 6 5 and 2, 904 save percentage, 2.84 goals against average. All right, all right, all right. But then in the postseason, he got his first career postseason dub through a shutout, all right, of the Oilers, of McDavid and the Oilers, and proceeds to go 16 4 and 2 with 8. Shutouts, a new NHL record for a single postseason. A 942 save percentage and 1.95 goals against average on our way to our first Stanley Cup in franchise history in our 58th year of existence. It was a ridiculous run and we have Hunter Jones to thank for it with eight shutouts through his 16 wins. Incredible, unfathomable, Data 782 Hall of Fame type numbers. Keep an eye out because the next induction to the Data 782 Hall of Fame will be coming towards the end of February. The ballots will open and the induction will be in the first week of March. So that being said, aside from that, other great storylines. Pedersen, 28 points. Hughes, our captain with 20. JT Miller woke up at the age of 35, 18 points from him. Reinhardt, Hyman, 14. Kuzmenko had a little bit of something at 13 points. Heronic, Lakaramaki, but Colson was a great hero for us. Seven goals and ten points. Most of those goals and points coming in the first two, three rounds. Hannafin, seven. Here's another crazy storyline. Jared McIsaac, it's kind of like a uh, Kyle Wood type storyline here. 79 overall, got him off waivers. Six points and a plus 17 in 22 games. Anze Kopitar, 40 years of age, we got him one more cup. Callum Ritchie, the rookie. Susie, Rasmus Ristolainen, our dear beloved son. We brought him into Vancouver and it was worth it because he scored the game winning goal that ended up being the Stanley Cup winning goal in game five of the cup final. Ridiculous. Three goals plus 15 from our dear beloved son. And Tom Willander, we want to see growth from. He was injured for a little bit and then kind of just lost his spot to McIsaac being so good. So there's a little recap on the season that was. It was incredible. We had descended into madness in the second half of the season as we barely squeaked into the postseason, but then we ascended to jubilation right after that. A crazy postseason run. Like I said, one of my favorites in French in the channel history but now the question is what will we do this off season we want to stay competitive absolutely but we do know that we have an aging core that has also been a bit of a lackluster core that in the regular season has not been performing Kuzmenko at 86 overall 32 years of age has had back-to-back 60 point seasons after he had been an 82 you know plus point per game plus kind of guy JT Miller as well now 35 years of age making 8 million per year 70 80 point guy he's now down to 59. Could he see further regression? Absolutely. So while we still think the core of our forwards, let's say the forwards at this moment, are Pedersen, Ratu, hopefully Lakaramaki, a lot of the rest of our, you know, top six, top nine, may be looking for a bit of a revamp this offseason, and we'll see what comes by the start of next year. So that being said, I have a really big plan in mind. It's all kind of like a four, five, even six team trade here at the draft, so you don't want to miss that. But before we get there, let's see what the assistant general managers had to say in the last one. There were a lot of lengthy comments, as always, a personal reply to all of them, but I can't get to them in episode. But they always help to situate us a little bit in what we want to think about for our game plan, especially when we think about who's going to be extended to come back next season. Stone, Hyman, could they come back? You know, they were rentals, but could they see some more time here in Vancouver? So as I said, let's turn to the assistant general managers and see what they had to say in the last one after we won that Stanley Cup. 
So as I said, just so many great comments, but I'll start running through a few that I wanted to highlight. Starting off with Kieran, who said, massive congratulations are in order. It seems the Canucks are only great when we've had a miserable season. And it sounds like it. As our last run to the Stanley Cup final a couple years ago also came when we had a similar type of season and we lost against the Rangers. Of course, this year we won against the Devils, but I digress. As for the next season, I would wave goodbye to Miller and I would happily drive Kuzmenko to the airport myself, as although they both contributed in the postseason, everyone did. I would have a top six looking like Ratu, Pedersen, and Stone. Then the second line, Reinhardt and LeCaramacchi, with a free agent or trade that would be the return for JT Miller. My reasoning is that Reinhardt can be on a last chance type of season, fight or flight. I think Stone is also a great piece and a player quite unique in the team, with the aforementioned two and Kopitar on the way out. He won't hamper your future for one more year as nobody is ready to replace him. That's very true on first line right wing, hopefully LeCaramacchi someday, but he will help with any chance next postseason even if he's further down the lineup by then so you know having scored 30 points in 22 games even if he's a lower overall him being a good simulation type player I could see a world where bringing back Mark Stone makes a lot of sense for us for the bottom six I would keep Coleman Kuzmenko but I think Kieran meant put Colson as the veteran leadership helping along the likes of O'Brien and Goldman I would perhaps look at Shane Pinto for third line center there are also other interesting names in free agency like Marchand or Russ who could help on the third line and he even perhaps contribute to special teams. Perhaps a bottom six that has something like Marchand and Rust with Pinto and O'Brien, and then a fourth line of Coleman, Goldman, and Pud Colson. That gives a nice balance in my opinion. Anderson Dolan 13th forward, and the other second rounders can get another year in the AHL. Keep the defense the same as with the goalie tandem. Best of luck. Go nux. Thank you, Kieran. So when it comes to the bottom six, there were some suggestions that said, let's get those veteran type guys, Marchand, Rust, a few names in free agency. It's not a deep, deep class, but I think we need to be very careful of potential growth. Don't forget Callum Ritchie either. Callum Ritchie is one name that a few people forgot. 80 overall, just had his rookie season. I think I would ideally like him as third line center. And then when it comes to players who are in the system, yes, we know Goldman could be making a push this next year, very likely actually, on top of other players like Misa, who's gonna want a chance, Niskla, who's coming soon, uh, even Brown, Johnston. So the bottom six, the middle six, it's set to be pretty crowded soon enough, but as of now, that's why I still see the argument for keeping Stone. So if I were to just look at the forwards right now and say, okay, in the perfect world, Kuzmenko and Miller are likely out. Let's say we keep Reinhardt. Let's say we keep Stone. As much as we love Hyman, let, just for the, the, the sake of argument for right now, let's say he moves out as well. The forwards would be Patterson on the first line, Ratu on the first line as well. And let's say Stone also on the first line. Second line, Reinhardt, LeCaramacchi, and fill in the blank. Third line, Put Colson, O'Brien, and let's say maybe Callum Ritchie. And the fourth line leaves you with those fill-in-the-blanks of the Colemans, the Jared Anderson Dolans, the Duheims, and maybe other players who might grow, like Akuratu, or even uh, Misa, Niskala, etc. So as much as I'd love to bring in a veteran guy like Machin who's going to sim super well, or even keep Zach Hyman, when I think about the current plan, which could always change, I'm not sure there's room for them when we consider that we want to get our prospects to get great growing for this aging core. They got to replace them sooner rather than later. We're seeing right now Kuzmenko and Miller are likely out. We got to have young players who are ready to fill their roles. Moving now to RMV2204, left a comment saying, what an amazing storyline on so many levels. I am too excited to write my thoughts in paragraphs, so let's go through some bullet points here. Number one, Hunter Jones is him. Jones to Smith tandem seems like the way to go from here. Number two, Stone is a keeper. Number three, Galena should stay as head coach. That first round exit from the past was definitely frustrating, but you can't argue with his overall record, true. Number four, changes to the roster still need to happen. As amazing as this run was, it probably is isn't sustainable, especially considering how there is no consistency from playoffs to regular season. Next, UPL is the odd man out for the goaltending. His contract extension is not looking to be very ideal, and it would probably be in your best interest to move him so you can allocate the cap to top performers from this past postseason. Next, Pud Colson deserves to stay in the top nine. He can get close to 30 points playing on the fourth line, so let's see what he can do on that third line. Next, obviously Tom Willander has to play next season, but it would be nice to see what McIsaac can do. And finally, head cannon would be that either a two or Jones wins the con Smythe. Congratulations. I've been waiting for all the hard work to culminate in a cup and seeing it happen was immensely satisfying. RMV, thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for contributions. Very much appreciated.
Next comment coming from someone who was very excited by the Stanley Cup victory, Pat saying, oh my goodness, was that ever thrilling and satisfying. After seeing Vancouver and Zach Hyman raise the cup, I think I've used up all my wishes. I think Galena also has to stay as head coach. First year and first cup in franchise history, I'd start building around his fits since he'll have a statue outside Rogers Arena. Even though he had been our coach previously and it wasn't his very first year with us, I still see what Pat's saying for sure. I would also 100% bring back Zach Hyman at just over 3 million and try to bring back Mark Stone even if he has to be third line going forward. UPL and Kopitar out. Maybe also trade out of the first round to get some of those later round low elites that we had seen at the end of last episode when we looked at the draft class. Also a good point. Excited for the next chapter. Pat, so happy that you're excited. Pat was one of the driving forces behind the rally to get Vancouver to be our first series of NHL 24, and here it is. So as I said previously with Zach Hyman, he'd be great to come back. We love him. He's a channel favorite. He wouldn't cost a lot, but it's just more down to the lineup spots. Do we want one more year of Hyman and we keep a guy like O'Brien on the fourth line? I don't know. I really really want O'Brien to get a full year before we decide pulling the plug on Caden O'Brien or what, we gotta give him a chance. His rookie season wasn't great, 14 points in 50 games, that was mostly fourth line minutes. When we played him third line left wing and second unit power play for just nine games from games 41 to 52, I believe he scored five points in nine games. So let's give Caden O'Brien a full year at third line left wing and second unit power play, barring any changes of course, and then we can make a decision on who he will be in this organization. Do we just pull the plug and trade? away his value or could we possibly see growth from him same thing for the Karamaki and why we want him in the top six so while I do think Hyman would perform better than O'Brien it's more that I'm thinking with that long-term mindset Next comment coming in from Gavin, who had mentioned, what a story for Aturatu, from fringe NHLer to absolute sniper in just five years. I don't know what to say about Hunter Jones. Not quite the regular season heroics that Philip Lindbergh had back in our Shark series, but that postseason was historic. The Conn Smythe winner in my books as well. Two future Data Hall of Fame members right there. So hard to think about the future when the present is so good, but I have been thinking, although Miller and Kuzmenko had resurgent playoffs, it's pretty clear that their time in Vancouver is over. Ratu 25, Pedersen 29, but aside from that, no one else in the top six is really, you know, under 32 even. Reinhardt's the youngest at that age. Although we just won a cup, in a few years here, we will be deficit of high scoring forwards if nothing changes. Gavin yeah, pretty much echoing a lot of what I was saying in my introduction. You've done a great job of filling out the future bottom and middle six with trades and draft picks. In my opinion, this is the time to go all out on a young point per game first line talent probably through trade if we can find a good candidate that fits the storyline. That's an, also an issue, right? Not many teams are buyers who would want Miller and Kuzmenko and also be willing to give up their top prospects. So you'll see what I cook up in the in the draft, but Gavin is exactly on the right track here. Overall, great video data, super entertaining, and love to hear your reactions to all the EA madness. Let's continue it into next year and make this Canucks team into a true dynasty. See you in the offseason and have a great day with the Cup. You deserve it. Thank you, Gavin. Edit also so don't get in the offseason since we're likely moving on from UPL and rolling with Jones and CDS. Look out for Silovs in free agency to be that reliable third goalie where we need him. Thank you for all those thoughts, Gavin. We will absolutely do so. Quick shout out here to this comment from LFC Sweden, the Liverpool fans across the pond saying chapeau, thank you very much, merci beaucoup. Once again, you prove that you don't need to cheat the system to become successful. What a legend. I think that's a great comment that highlights the philosophy that we have here on the channel and I appreciate the recognition of it. We'll move over now to Cheating Heel, who said, First off, EA should be ashamed of putting a game like this on the shelves each year. Just the goalie simulation, players bring the pucks in their own net, it was ridiculous. But that being said, what a storyline with the Battle of the Hughes brothers. The coaching change seems to have done wonders on this team, and our first line, along with Jones, have carried them through. And although some of the players have offered better performances in the offseason... I think their performances in general over the last couple of years warrants a change of scenery and now that we've won with this core, we can say mission accomplished and look toward the future. Very well said Cheating Heel, we've done right by this core, now let's make sure that we're set up for the future. My plan this offseason would be as follows. Try to extend Stone for a year as his line with Ratu and Pedersen has been killing it. Plus, we have no one really ready to take his place and his ask is quite decent. Same thing as Gavin mentioned, yes. Lakaramaki also needs to have a spot on the second line, but I'd be looking 
looking at trading Reinhardt, Kuzmenko, and Miller. So that being said, I agree with Kuzmenko and Miller, and I'm not opposed to trading Reinhardt. I just don't know if I want that drastic of a change just yet. Cheating Hill giving some suggestions for possible targets. But Colson and Richie are also locks on the third line. I'd let Hyman walk if we have a prospect ready for third line minutes. Otherwise, we bring him back. There's Caden O'Brien spot. Maybe Kopitar comes back for a year. We'll think about that. Fourth line thoughts, Anderson Dolan, etc. On defense, Willander hasn't impressed. Maybe we make a lateral move and we look for one of the year check brothers. I like those thoughts as well. As for the coaches, Ramirez, his contract's going to expire, so we'll let him walk. Then we'll see Galena's fit and we'll figure out what's going to happen with the coaching. It's been an awesome run filled with ups and downs, but I've never doubted that you would bring us to the promised land. Great work, GM Data, but once again, you won't have much time for vacations as you have another big offseason ahead of you. Absolutely. Thank you, Cheating Heel. And just finishing off in an epilogue, mentioning that the Prime Minister has declared June 8th as National GM Data Holiday. All throughout the country, statues of GM Data are being built so that fans can pray in the hope that GM Data will come and save their franchise from mediocrity. That's that's incredible. Cheating Yield, thank you for your thoughts. I can't wait for next June 8th. Next comment coming in from Lacton who said, in the beginning of this season, I doubted this team. And coming to the playoffs, I didn't see it going that far. But you just showed me that you are the real GM and that we are only assistants. Now, it's a team effort, Lacton. Thank you for the kind words. Surprised that Jones didn't win the con smite, but that's just EA. For us, he's the real MVP. We also had doubts about Galena, but he has managed to bring this team to life. And he does deserve to be head coach next year. Hunter Jones also has to be the starter after that performance. I mentioned in the beginning of the season to not extend UPL but you had other thoughts so now we'll just have to trade him no problem no harm no foul I would also love to see Jared McIsaac stay he has always played great Hyman wasn't great in the season but he did have a great postseason due to the chance that O'Brien Goldman or Niskla could play in the top nine next year I don't know if we can afford to keep him though same with Mark Stone he's 82 but he'll probably go down in the offseason that I fully agree with I wouldn't be surprised if he's like an 80 overall but again it just comes down to how he simulates so that wouldn't be a bad thing veteran presence leader good penalty killer even if he wants like three million we could afford to keep him question is if we trust the Karamaki to be a top six player if there is someone in free agency who could play second or third line maybe sign him for one year I will say the free agency pool isn't that deep but I see where you're coming from like Karamaki really has to show us something if he's going to be a full-time second liner go Canucks go and let's go back to back thank you Lacton great thoughts just a couple more comments now. I know there's a lot, like I said, but we just want to run through a couple more. I'm sorry that I can't highlight all of them. Louis leaving a comment saying, wow, just wow. Man, I won't lie. I had little to no hope thinking that this team would win a cup. Yeah, we go on the most entertaining cup run of channel history in my book. And Louis has been here a long time, so that's saying something. A true underdog story. Hunter Jones got the con smite stolen. What a run from the 27-year-old rookie. Anywho, the cup has been lifted, and it's the beginning of an era here in Vancouver. I'll just jump straight to recommendations. Number one, the re-signs. McIsaac, what a trooper. He gives me Kyle Wood vibes. As I mentioned earlier, that's where I got the idea from. That postseason run for him was a revelation. Mm -hmm. Sign this guy ASAP. Cheap performing 6 slash 7th D. For the forwards, I would maybe only re-sign Hyman to a one-year deal. We have four upcoming rookies in the system, so it's sad to say, and you know me, I'm not a fan of bottom six potential, so Stone and Kopitar, I would let walk. Susie is serviceable, but 33, so don't commit too long on him either. And again, I don't disagree with Louis on the, the thoughts on Mark Stone. He will regress. He will be getting paid more than he should, according to his overall potential and his age. But again, if he simulates, that's fine with me. And we don't really have anyone else to be first line right wing as of right now, just yet. Number two at the draft, getting all the guys you have pinned will be relatively easy since our top guy is like 77th, so we'll take care of that. Man, what an episode. Easily my favorite cup run in channel history. Continue le beau travail, mon vieux. Oh, and one more thing. Thing. ravioli ravioli give me the formuoli yes sir merci louis thank you for your thoughts now to finish off the episode i'm gonna go to this last comment from mighty joe maple giving us probably one of the greatest narratives storylines immersion experiences of like channel history in terms of a, of a comment that had to do with a storyline so you can go ahead and read through this one. It's a very long one. I won't go through it as if I'm giving you an audiobook here. But it's all about little Timmy watching the Vancouver Canucks win the Stanley Cup. He adds his Rasmus Risto line in jersey as Risto scores the Stanley Cup winning goal. Tears welling in each other's eyes. He hugs his father. He's thankful to be here. It's a great story. It's really wholesome. Just brings a smile to your face. So enjoy it. Mighty Joe, thanks for leaving it. And it definitely goes down in channel history as an all-time comment. So ladies and gentlemen, there 
there are the AGM thoughts longer than I usually like to dedicate to AGM thoughts because I know that a lot of people just want to see the actual offseason but I appreciate you waiting through it now comes the draft and what you've all been waiting for my big master plan that I have been kind of cooking up in my mind it's not easy to make this happen with all the AI GMs because in theory we want to move out Kuzmenko and Miller as the number one priorities but at the same time JT Miller has in the real world a modified no trade clause with a 15 team no trade list and Andre Kuzmenko you would also think that when we gave him his big extension has some sort of modified no trade clause as well so if we were to trade Kuzmenko and or Miller it would have to be to contending buyers from buyers we would get back picks and or prospects but we want some sort of the top six forward coming back in our return as well we also want to dump UPL we also want to have money for extensions we also want to think towards the future lineup spots it's a difficult balance that we want to have here so in the off season it's not really just a three team trade not even like a four team trade it's more like a five even six team trade not traditionally in the sense where like teams three and teams five are making deals with one another each of those other four or five teams involved are tied directly back to us so it's more like we're flipping what we get to teams that want that return and then we end up getting what we want it's kind of redistributing the needs of the league a little bit a team needs a goalie they're gonna get a goalie we get back a prospect that team has no prospects of this kind they get that prospect so instead of these teams trading with each other because they never will here in EA with the AI GMs trading only like twice a year with each other we'll kind of help out the league to make trades that wouldn't be made otherwise while also benefiting fitting as the the broker of these deals moving out a lot of value but also bringing in value that will help us both this year and into the future so that being said bear with me it's gonna be a bit of a fast uh, run through here because the clock is ticking here at the draft let's head into the entry draft and start making the moves that both we and the AGMs have kind of been thinking of here so the very first move that we want to do or just the very first thing we have to do is find a team that is a a buyer and B has good prospects on the block there are almost no teams in the league that are buyers and have good picks on the block like for example the here the coyotes are buyers but when I look at when I say picks I mean prospects excuse me when I look at their rookie skaters who's on the block no one that's really super enticing to me 68 overall 20 year old defenseman that's just a recipe for a guy who's never going to grow you go look at the flames here they're buyers who do they have on the block they have Vason and who we traded to them then a 67 overall 20 years no there's nothing there, there are no buyers I did my research already there are no almost no buyers that have good prospects on the block except for the Ottawa Senators the Senators are buyers and they have some decent prospects here on the block in Rosidas, Edler, Paulson etc so the very first trade will be that we're moving JT Miller to the Ottawa Senators JT Miller he is already playing for a Canadian team so I would you know if we go with the assumption that he's willing to move to another Canadian team that he wants to go to a competing team they are buyers they have a very very good core they have a great team I looked at what their team is if you just want to get a quick look if you don't believe me Stutzla, Cole Iserman, Ga Gavin, Kachuk, Taravainen it's a very good team he'd be joining a solid core here in uh, in Ottawa we would then take back Rosidas as well as a couple of draft picks here I have it all in my notes here we'd be taking back two thirds picks 75 and 94 and this guy Rosidas, medium top six center, Jan Rosidas, first over, uh, eighth overall pick in 2026 by the Islanders. He's been traded from the Islanders to the Senators, uh, now to the Canucks, who and then we'll be flipping him later. So JT Miller, two more years at eight million, goes to the Ottawa Senators, who are buyers, and he will try to compete there. Eastern Conference, he's gone. JT Miller, thank you for your service, my friend. He has spent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine parts of nine seasons here in Vancouver. Great Eight seasons one Stanley Cup he's been a great part of our squad but it's time to move on from him now and we'll get back a little bit of value from him a prospect a couple thirds I think that makes sense for a guy who could be in their top six even their middle six for a couple of years so thank you Ottawa that is going to be trade accepted I'm happy to accept this proposal on behalf of the Ottawa Senators and we consider it a done deal thank you Ottawa so now I'm gonna go ahead and just sim one pick so we can reset the clock here uh, the Penguins draft this medium elite defensive defense
defenseman. Next pick now, there aren't many teams, like I said, who have prospects on the block. So now this is going to be a pick trade. We got to find a buyer who wants to trade one of their first round picks. Not many exist. The Senators wanted to trade their eighth, but we wouldn't have been able to get the eighth because of value. And then once they acquired Miller, they don't want to trade it anymore. So the next pick that's up for grabs is pick number 14 from the Lightning. So are the Lightning buyers? Yes, they are. So the Tampa Bay Lightning, let's assume as well that Kuzmenko is open to going to a competing team. He gets to go to another conference. We get to move on from him. If we look at their lineup, there's room for him as well. If we look at the forwards, if we look at one, two, three, four, five, six, he slots into that top six, middle six, and he's a part of a good core that's signed on long term. He should be excited to go to a team like Tampa Bay. We would take back a first, but we also have to make the money work for Tampa. So we'll take back an expiring contract that costs them a lot of money, and that's Victor Hedman. Victor Hedman expiring. He, they're not going to have money to resign him. He's making almost $11 million. It just frees up the money for right now. We would then also send back, we would be flipping one of the thirds we just got from Ottawa, the Montreal pick at 94. Four, we'll throw in a seventh round pick next year. We have two sevenths, so we'll throw in one seventh and we'll throw in the rights to one of our depth players that they are interested in. We can't re sign everybody. If we have Jared Anderson Dolan, we have all these guys, uh, rookies pushing, we can't keep everybody. So, as good as Coleman was, I think we'll just throw in the rights to Blake Coleman. There he is, 36 years old. The other guy that we got off, no, we didn't get him off waivers. We traded a sixth round pick for Blake Coleman from Anaheim. Came to be a good depth guy, got a Stanley Cup ring. Those are the type of trades that I love to make. A sixth that turned into a good valuable depth piece. Now we'll flip him to Tampa. So we get the 14th overall pick from Tampa, Victor Hedman's UFA rights, and they get Kuzmenko, a third, a seventh, and Blake Coleman's UFA rights. So Kuzmenko, he was undrafted, of course, came over from the KHL in 2022-23, 450 points in 491 games as a Canuck. Our first three years, he was point per game plus, as many as 45 goals. For the last couple of years, 60 points, negative 13, He's just been going downhill, and again, it's a costly guy to have who isn't performing. So Kuzmenko off to the Lightning, Eastern Conference swap. We get the 14th pick and Victor Hedman. There we go. I'm happy to accept this proposal. Thank you, Tampa Bay. And there's another big deal right there. Now, I think the clock's still going, so I say let's continue here. We're not going to be keeping Victor Hedman as much as you might be saying, let's keep him, let's keep him. It's a bit too much uh, money. The defenseman, of course, wanting more and more as the years go on. I don't think we're going to be able to beat the clock here. But if there's a buyer that wants him. Actually, I'll sh show you this in the fine trade so that you know that I'm not making it up because I've already done the pre-scouting like I said. If I go to fine trade, a good 81 overall medium league guy going to the Bruins there, and I say, what could I get for Victor Hedman? I'm not cheesing it. I'm seeing what would teams offer me. I get a third and this prospect from the Coyotes or two sevenths from Chicago. So obviously I'm going to look at the third from the Coyotes. This guy, Leclerc, low top nine, unsigned prospect. Uh, I guess... If we take him out, we can't even get a seventh. I remember looking at this. So we may as well just keep him. Why not? Throw him in the system and see if he becomes anything. So Victor Hedman's UFA rights then get flipped now to the Coyotes for a third in next year's draft. They're buyers. They want him. And they're offering it to us. Okay, no problem. Thank you, Arizona. Now, here's the big deal that we've been waiting for. We've traded out Miller. We've traded out Kuzmenko. We need someone else in the top six who we can have to be a scoring threat. We need some goals in here. We need someone who can score. So if I look through all the trade blocks in the NHL, there are very few top six players who are currently available. But there is one that's been there for about a season now that a few people in the comments, especially Green Pug Gaming, has been recommending a few times. And that is over on the Philadelphia Flyers, Owen Tippett. I know there's a few other guys, Carter Verhage, guys like that. But when I look at players who simulate well and don't cost an arm and a leg, Owen Tippett would be one of those guys. Two more years at 4.655 million. The Flyers are sellers. They've been having him on the block for over a year now. He's a solid 60 plus point guy. Not a ton of goals, but we, I think we could still hopefully get him to 25, 30. And just the point production is val very valuable in and of itself. He's been playing a lot of minutes, but he'll be playing even more, I think, here. So Owen Tippett, I think he could be having like a, a poise for a breakout type of season. What we'll give Philadelphia would be flipping Rositas. We'll flip Rositas from the Ottawa trade. And then I'll also give you, bear with me, our 32nd overall pick. The first, our own first round pick. Rositas and a first going to Philadelphia in exchange for a third in 2029. I'm not sure if we get any more than that. I don't think we get any. Let's say we just throw in a seventh here to try and balance it out. 
a third in 2028? No, just a touch. So this would be it. Owen Tippett comes to us in exchange for Rositas, the prospect we got in the JT Miller swap. Our own first, which we can afford moving now that we have the 14th pick, and we send it to Philadelphia. Their sellers, they get a prospect and a first in exchange for a player that they've been wanting to move and a third next season. Philadelphia, trade accepted. Thank you very much. Okay. So that's about it for trades we that I was really thinking about. There's one more that I'm thinking of. Already that's a four-team, five-team conglomeration. And a lot of things just happened, but here's a recap of what we just did. So coming into Vancouver is Owen Tippett, Tampa's first, a third from Ottawa. Now I know there was like, some of them were San Jose's, some were Carolina, some were the Canadians. I put the team that traded it to us so even though it says Ottawa third, I think it's Carolina third, but it came from Ottawa. So we get a first, a third in this year's draft, and two more thirds with Owen Tippett in exchange for moving JT Miller to Ottawa, Victor Hedman's UFA rights to Arizona, Tampa gets Kuzmenko, Coleman, a third and a seventh, and then Philadelphia gets Rositas and our first at pick number 32. I had asked in the Discord server, do we like this type of value if we were to move out our first round pick, Miller and Kuzmenko, would we be happy with getting back a first three thirds and a top six forward? And the overwhelming answer was yes. So a lot just happened very quickly, but here's how it all shapes up. Now there is one more deal we could think of because we didn't move UPL yet. And that would be trading up for another pick because at pick number 14, no one really interests me. If we sim a few picks, just get closer to 14, just to give you a better idea of what's going on. So here's the draft so far, medium lead, medium lead, medium lead, 80 overall medium lead going right there. If we sim, let's say at least to pick number, I don't know, at least past pick number eight, let's say. Let's say we're at pick number nine right now. We could have traded for Ottawa's eighth earlier, but we decided to make the Rosita swap instead. It worked out, trust me, it worked out a lot better. There's a couple of medium lead players who are three years away. So these guys are like 60 some overall. Yes, medium elite, but 60 some overall. At 14, it would be a medium lead guy who's two years out. So probably some guy who's like high 60s, low 70s, probably low 70 overall, medium top six forwards. Or I would really like to trade up for pick number 12 and get Maxime Bouillon, possibly son of Francis Bouillon. He's NHL ready, offensive defenseman, similar to P.K. Subban, very good attributes it looks like, 44 points in the QMJHL. We don't have almost anyone in our pool for defense. We have a couple of low elites, but we have almost no one for high-end talent in our uh, prospect pool when it comes to the defensive side of things. So I would like to trade up for pick number 12. If he's here at pick number 12, because he should be, there's the medium leads that go 66 overall, yeah. So here at pick number 12, I would like to trade with the Hurricanes. They, if I remember correctly, don't have a backup goalie. So if I were to say Carolina, I'll give you Uko Pekalukanen and the 14th overall pick in exchange for the 12th overall pick. Let me just throw this in the trade right here. 14 and UPL for 12 because you don't have a backup. Yeah, you have Kachetkov and then Grubauer is on an expiring deal. So you have no backup. So there you go. Uh, would you be willing to make this happen? Or are you 14 in UPL for 12? And I could maybe take back a little bit more. Could I take back uh, a fifth here? A fifth from the Hurricanes? No, I probably wouldn't be able to take back anything because they don't want to trade the 12th. Even though this is a great deal for them, they need a backup goalie. A seventh? No. Okay, straight up. Uh, even then, no. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I thought this might happen. Here's what I'm going to do. Realistically, this makes a lot of sense for the Hurricanes. You're getting, you're moving down only two selections, and you're getting something that you need. So if I let the Hurricanes draft, this Bouillon probably goes, yeah, okay, Bouillon goes here. Let me guess now. Let me guess. His trade value will be remarkably lower than what his first round pick, what the first round pick value was. Yes, exactly. So I really want Bouillon. I think I'm going to make it work that it happens. I don't think this is cheese because it's more that the game, they, the game shouldn't value the pick more than it values the prospect who was selected by the pick. So especially if the pick just happened right now. So if I give you pick 14 and UPL, now your fans will be dancing in the streets if I offer you this. Yeah, look at the trade value now. You'll be dancing in the streets. So I'm not going to cheese it. I could probably get a third round pick out of this as well. I'm going to say just Bouillon. I'm going to give you Lukanen. I would like to get like a seventh out of it just to say in case there's a balancer involved. But I could get more from this and I'm not going to cheese it. I'll take back a seventh 
essentially the 12th pick and a 7th next year for the 14th pick and UPL right now. I could trade UPL by himself and get more value, but because I don't want to be, you know, have, I want to be able to sleep at night and not say that I cheesed the game, I'm going to say just a 7th. Carolina dancing in the streets, dancing in the streets. There you go. If I didn't accept this offer of yours, the Hurricanes fans would be calling for my resignation. This is a no-brainer. All right, thank you, Carolina. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, as if we just drafted Bouillon. And you know what? I didn't even look at him being a 77 overall because I knew that he was NHL ready, so I just in my brain. But there he is, Maxime Bouillon. Bienvenue à l'équipe, mon ami. Welcome to Vancouver, Bello. You are 77 overall with three-star puck skills, three-star shooting, three-star everything, four-star skating, two-and-a-half-star physical, spinorama, superstar ability. Amazing! We get Maxim Bouillon in the system. We didn't really have any uh, defensemen at all, aside from those low elite guys. As we can see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven. In the system, Bouillon right away is our top guy. Who else is out here? Couple of low elites, low top Shen, Vilan Sewell, now Miknov, Cook. Yeah, low guys who hopefully they can become something, but really in terms of who can we bank on for some growth, hopefully Bouillon can be our future guy on that left side. So thank you very much, Carolina. Now, if we, let's sim one more pick just to get the clock out of our way. Now, if we take everything we just did and put it back into the grand scheme of things for just the last few minutes in this draft, by the way, we could have gotten Maloney maybe at four. If we kept 14, we could have gotten Jeffrey Maloney, medium top six sniper, fine value, fine, fine value. But I would have preferred, I wanted to get Bouillon instead because we needed some defense in our system. We have wingers already. So if I just go here for a second, now looking at our draft pick situation, we have two thirds now, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. Next year, first, second, three thirds, a fifth, a sixth, and two sevenths. So if we put Carolina into our big chart, now here's how everything looks with the Hurricanes having gotten UPL and the 14th overall pick. If you want to call it like a six team type of trade, since technically the Lightning's first came from that trade with the Headman and then the Coyotes and all that. But all in all, all you really need to know is Moving out in the last few minutes here at the draft have been Miller, Kuzmenko, Coleman, Lukanen, pick 32, and a 7th next year in exchange for Owen Tippett, the 12th overall pick that became Bouillon, 3 thirds, 1 this year, 2 next year, and a 7th next year. So Tippett a 1st, 3 thirds, and a 7th for Miller, Kuzmenko, Coleman, UPL a 1st, and a 7th. Wow, how about that? I'm very happy with that return. You gotta understand that Miller and Kuzmenko do not have the value that they once did, but I think we sent them to the right places. We did right by them, and I think we didn't break the game either. I think we made deals that made a lot of sense for everybody involved. People who were buyers got uh, now pieces, teams that were sellers got future pieces, and we got a little bit of both. So I'm very happy with that return. What a few minutes here at the draft to kick off the 2028 off season. Welcome Owen Tippett to the organization. Excited to have him on board. Now when I think of our team and I look at our forwards, if I sort by overall, it gives me one, two, three, four, five, six, let's say in our top six, then our third line would be Pedkolzin, O'Brien, and let's say Callum Ritchie, and then the fourth line, as I said before, a mishmash of a few other players in there. So overall-wise, we took a bit of a hit here. No more at 89 overall JT Miller that there once was, 88 overall Andre Kuzmenko, but I think that Reinhardt, Tippett, Ratu should actually be an 88. I don't know why he's at an 85. Like Karamaki, who should get some growth. Stone, who simulates above his overall. I think we're in an okay spot. And we get a lot of cap space as well. We got a lot of cap space here. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There are the trades. But we still have the draft to take care of. We're not done yet. We still have the draft. So our next pick is at pick number 75. I'm sure there's players we want to get before then. Some of these top six guys in the first round are definitely interesting, but we know that they can be found throughout the draft itself. The low elite Bufflin, we were thinking about him if we kept our pick at 32, but Hayden Bufflin will have to be uh, left behind for someone else to pick up. Uh, if I start by pinned, actually, uh, the first guy we want is Kvapil at 77, but we thought a bit more about him. If we're going to take a medium league goalie... Why would we take Kvapil, who is 20 and 3 years away, when we could take Esh, who's 17 and 5 years away, right? So Kvapil is 3 years older, but he's only 2 years closer. He's still 3 years away. He'll still be 23, 24 by the time he makes the NHL. I don't know. If they were together, maybe I'd lean Kvapil. But if one is at 77 and one's at 129, there's a difference there, especially when there's gems we want to be picking up. 
So I don't think we draft anybody really at 70, uh, 75. We'll sim to 75. I'm sure many good players have gone. Oh, there's Kvapo going anyways. We weren't even going to take him. So there you go. Medium lead 65 overall. I'd rather take the medium lead who's like 50 overall and three years younger. So there you go. Uh, what else? We have medium top nine forwards, medium top six Ds, low top six forwards. Yeah, nothing crazy. Nothing too crazy. I'm sure those medium top sixes at the, at the top of the second round were good. But we weren't going to be trading up for that. We already made a lot of trades already. So at pick 75, we'll probably trade down unless we take this low top six grinder. Benjamin Henley, I don't know. Anybody else who really stands out to me? Not so much. Low top six two-way forward, Steven Buzis. Low top four two-way D, Steven Harper. That's funny. Uh, Kovalev, Valer uh, Valerie Kovalev's a gem. Valerie Kovalev, but four years away. I ah, 17, so it makes sense. Or do we just trade down to get more picks for our gems later on? Because if we say there's at least one, two, three, four, five, six players that we want, how many picks do we have? One, two, three, four, five. So trading down from 75, I don't think would be a bad thing. If we could just find a team that has a couple picks to trade, maybe in the fourth round, here we go. Maybe the Ducks want to give us a couple of fourths and I can find a way to move out this third. What do you think about that? I'll give you 75 in exchange for 118 and 119. What do you say to that, Anaheim? Isn't sufficient at all. Of course it isn't. We could flip some of the picks from next season. The seventh from Pittsburgh that we already had. What do you say now, Anaheim? Okay, now trade accepted. Okay, a third and a seventh for two fourths. I'll take that. The pick ended up being a top nine forward. Great. So pick 96. The question is, do we even keep this one at this point? Medium starter, Ashton Kieran, five years away. No. Uh, even this one we might not keep. Maybe we could take some sort of pick next season as well. The first pick that we'd be looking at is maybe at 131 for Esh. So let's trade down a little bit then. Pittsburgh, can I give you a third and a fourth for a fourth, a fifth, and a seventh? What do you say to this? Too far off? Just a fourth and a fifth then? Okay, fifth, fourth and a fifth. I'll take it. Even though we are... It doesn't make sense. A third and a fourth for a fourth and a fifth. But whatever. So pick 118 will be where we make our first few selections. We've been trading around, waiting to make our first selection. This will be it. Edward Esch is going to be first from the Portland Winterhawks at pick number 118 here. Edward, you are 49 overall, medium elite, but 17 years old. I'm looking forward to hopefully having you as a future goaltender in our system, my friend. Medium elite goes a long way. Now we have back-to-back -back picks from Anaheim. Pick number 119 now. Even though it's a bit of a reach, it's impossible to play around with the AI. So I'm going to go ahead and take Jim Beach, low elite defense of defenseman gem and then we might play around with the next few picks so here he is 53 overall low elite no problem pick number 137 now uh connor garland and a six that's tempting i would love to get connor garland like we said same reason why we can't resign zach hyman probably not we just can't uh, overpopulate that middle and bottom six so now at 137 the next guy that we really want would be at in like the 180s then the 200s after that so aside from that, anybody with interesting potential at all? Not really. The low elites are the only guys we have. A lot of other guys, that's it, not really fully uncovered. Low top six, Tommy Allen at 364. Low top 42, 80. No, that's it. So I'm going to say let's go ahead and play around with this pick. Could I get a sixth and two sevenths for two fifths? Not even, even though that makes perfect sense. Minnesota, how about you give me a sixth next year and two sevenths now for two fifths? All right, great. Thank you very much. Get another pick next season. They take a medium top nine forward. So at 176, we'll take the guy that was going to go in the 180s. Playing around with a little bit of uh, musical chairs here. So uh, Keeper, Xander Keeper, 19-year-old, two-way D, low elite. Uh, was there anyone else who was in that range? No. After that, unless we go with the low elite, two-way D gem, six foot four. Six foot one, right-handed, both 19, both five years away. C's with a couple of D's versus ooh, an E in there. All right, let's go for Nasland. Why not? Ludwig Nasland, bigger guy. Why not? We're only take three out of those four, I think, anyways. 59 overall, low elite. There have been worse selections. Number 218 now. We'll take the other gem who we had out here, which was... We can get both of them. So, Rodrigo Bomic. Uh, left winger, okay, low elite, not a gem, and the last pick will be Engvist, 50 overall. It's good to just get these guys in the in the system for trades, for whatever else, for some surprise growth. We gotta make sure that the shelves are stocked well. Calais Engvist, Mr. Irrelevant, the final selection of the draft at 224. 
five years away, beautiful from Moto of the SHL, and he was a 52 overall. All right, so Esh, medium lead goalie, and then a bunch of low lead gems after that, as well as Bouillon at 12 from the Hurricanes, and Owen Tippett, and draft picks next season. That was quite a draft, ladies and gentlemen. Not a lot of, like, medium top six forward two years away type value, but low elite, let's see what happens, trade value, who knows what type of draft. I'm quite content with the system being um, reinforced a little bit there. We look at the unsigned players. We got a defenseman here in Bouillon. Miknov, we said he was growing a little bit, maybe Shen, but aside from that, we have some options for once. And we look at the potentials. I see a lot of elite. I saw top six. I don't see top six D. I don't see seventh D. I don't see uh, top nine forward. Lots of options. So that being said, there is the draft. Ladies and gentlemen, let's advance today to the re-sign phase now. Ramirez will be released as coach. We know that. A few scouts will be re-signed. Very good. And now we come to the re-sign phase itself. I probably should have traded away uh, Kopitar for like a seventh or something. I should have kept that in mind. But not a big deal. I think it makes sense that uh, the lower end guys can just be allowed to walk while the, the higher end guys like Hedman can be actually his rights get traded. So we look at the all expiring. We saw Zach Hyman. We know it'll be great to bring him back, but I just don't think there's room. Carson Soucy, I'd like to bring him back if we can yeah, keep it in the two point somethings. Yeah. And Mark Stone, we said that he'd be open to a nice cheap deal as well. We'll do a one year on him even though he is regressing. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to take care of everyone else, giving entry-level deals to prospects, and then I'll come back in a moment to say what we're going to do with the larger contracts. All right, so looking at the UFAs first here, we have over 30 million to play with. We'll start off with Carson Soucy. I'd like to get him for third pair defense if we can. Another one-year type of deal on him. 3.025, 85% is 2.57. So if he wants to do one-year 2.6, I'd bring him back. Carson Soucy, one-year 2.6. Mark Stone, what would he want for one year? 3.1. Just won the con Smythe. Let's not go too, too cheap. 2.635. Let's go to 2.75. 2.75 Mark Stone. He knows he's getting older. He knows there's injury prone uh, considerations to take into account. One year, 2.7 on Mark Stone. Jared Anderson Dolan to come back as 13th type forward. That's yeah, a bit expensive for a 79 overall. Anze Kopitar, we know that we'll be letting him walk. We thank you for your time here in Vancouver, my friend. Two years with the Canucks, one Stanley Cup. Playing in the end, 156 games, scoring 106 points. 106 points in 158 games, 156 games. Yeah, very respectable. Well done to Anze Kopitar. Gets the Stanley Cup ring. We wish you the best in free agency. Jared McIsaac now, we know that we got to keep him. I don't know about three years, but I could definitely throw him a bone and say let's do two 85 percent 1.33 so 1.35 for two years on jared mcisaac i think he's earned that let's see what he thinks about that kind of contract niels oman uh, we've loved him he's been nhl ahl it's been a little while since we've seen him seen him in the nhl it's a couple of full years in the ahl he's 28 now i think we got to let him walk and make room for the other guys who are going to be wanting to play down there so niels oman thank you for your service we'll let you walk unfortunately anderson dolan i'm not sure about let's continue now over to the rfas Caden o'brien we know that we'll be signing him what kind of deal though we could go two years yeah two years makes a lot of sense for it imagine eight let's go two years 85 percent 1.44 so let's go two years at 1.5 for Caden o'brien Callum Ritchie, okay, that's pretty good as well, two, he'd take three years as an RFA even, eh? Let's go two years on uh, on uh, on Ritchie, two years, one million, so two years, two mil, one more year of RFA eligibility after that, which will allow us to decide what's going on with him, so Callum Ritchie, two-year deal, O'Brien, two-year deal, uh, that's about it for the RFAs, uh, the goalies, I sent a deal to Muller, we'll have to trade Bobby Stoll, most likely, and then just in general, the unsigned players, like Goldman's going to get a contract for sure. So Tom Goldman, we want him playing in the NHL next season, or at least trying to. So we'll give him a contract, and we'll wait on the rest for now. No need to rush anything. Let's advance a day here. Uh, wants to be given a chance to play. You got given quite a good chance to play Carson Soucy. I'm not sure why you got to whine about it. Okay, Mark Stone, easy decision. Very good. Everybody else, uh, what's with the big book from McIsaac? Was the, wants the length. Wants a three-year deal. Come on, buddy. Easy decisions from everybody else. Honor, it's an honor. Great. Okay, back to the UFAs though. So Duheim wants 1.2 million. No, you're definitely not getting that. Duheim's going to be released. Jared Anderson Dolan, at least he has a case to say that I want 1.3 or whatever that he's asking. 
Last couple of years, he's been in NHL. Yeah, he's been three years in the organization, two years in the NHL, two full seasons as a fourth liner. He's a plus player, 18, 17 points, low ice time, doing good work for low ice time. He's been a trooper down there. There's value in that, I will admit. Carson Soucy didn't like the, the, the one-year deal that he was offered, but too bad, buddy. That's exactly what you're getting. We have a lot of money, so I'm going to go one-year $3 million. I'm not going to bend over backwards to give Carson Soucy a two-year deal, and then we're stuck when we actually do need the money later on. So right now, we can afford it. One-year $3 million. We'll see what you say. Zach Hyman, buddy, I'd love to sign you on. I'd love to sign you on. Unless you do some sort of sign and trade where we give you a two, three year, no, it only makes sense if it's an eight year deal, which of course doesn't make sense at 36 years of age. Jared McCaskill, all right, so I'm going to go heavy, but a one year deal. I'm not going to do two years 1.5, I'm going to do one year 1.75. Instead of two years 1.5, one year 1.75. All right, advance a day, some scouts are going to sign on as well. All right, Susie's still unhappy, an easy decision from McIsaac, that's good at least. But Susie, what are you crying about? I want to be given the chance to play. You had one season where a majority of your time was spent out due to injury, if I'm not mistaken. But even if you were a healthy scratch, you played in the postseason, you got your Stanley Cup. I'm telling you right now, you'll play next year. What are you crying about? One year at 3.25. Come on now, Carson. Don't give me this. Um, and we said everybody else was figured out, eh? So it's pretty much just this dude now. Carson, come on, buddy. We're just waiting on you a little bit now. A couple more scouts. Very good. Easy decision. All right. Thank you. That leaves us with over 26 million in cap space right now. We gotta, we gotta spend some money here somewhere, right? We're too uh, affordable. It's too cheap. Crazy. Like next season, big contract to Ratu, big contract to the Karamaki. We'll need some money, but right now, that's it's crazy. On defense, yeah, the year after, Hannafin's going to need some uh, some sort of deal going on. But, wow, for this year right now, like, if there was a big fish in free agency, that would be the perfect time to go after them. But there's almost no one very interesting at all. Maybe it's just meant to be that we sign Hyman and figure him out later. Sign and figure out. We need to fill a little bit of cap space here and make sure we pass the cap floor, depending on what kind of transactions we move, do. I don't want the game to fix our, our uh, cap hits. So if I say one year, three million for Zach Hyman, 85% is 2.74. So one year, three million on Zach Hyman. We can keep him until the preseason. And worst case, we package him with Bobby Stoll and other prospects who are taking up too much space in the AHL. And we find some sort of new home for him. But at least right now, right here, right now, he guarantees that he gets value of one year, three million, as opposed to the maybe if things weren't working on free agency, he ends up having to take into the twos. He can lock in that dollar value right now. So I guess that's about it. Anderson Dolan, you're lucky we need to hit the cap floor. We'll give you 1.2, I guess. One year, 1.2. It's all just one year type things because next year is going to be the year that we need some more money. Uh, Zach Hyman wants more money. Same for Anderson Dolan. What? Come on, I'm extending the olive branch here. I guess it makes more sense today. I guess maybe he thinks he can get more in free agency. All right, you're, here's more than you would have gotten. One year, 3.5 with the understanding that we might trade you. For not, I wouldn't cheese it and get a lot of value. Don't worry. And Anderson Dolan, one year, 1.3. Come on now, gentlemen. Come on now. Easy decision, easy decision. Bing, bang, bong. Still leaves us with over 23.5 million in cap space. That takes care of everything that we have to take care of. It's crazy cheap cap hits. We could weaponize this. In the real world, we'd weaponize this, take on bad contracts. But the game just isn't smart enough for that. So there we go. We fired Ramirez because his contract was expiring. We signed on our scouts. We're good to advance one more day to July 1st. Let's see what is waiting for us here in the free agency pool. I'm going to take a moment to check out if there's any better scouts to sign on. Then we'll check out the player and staff free agency pools. All right, nothing crazy for the scouts. Just one signed on. Now let's head into the free agency pool, looking at the potential UFAs who are out here, and we'll just sort by overall. All right, so Zacharensky is the, I guess, big fish out here. 30 years old and 87 overall. Gustav Forsling, William Carlson, Sharon Govich, Lazat, Radish. Yeah, not an impressive free agent pool, I have to say. Guys like Shane Pinto, who we're talking about earlier for third line center, but we're kind of thinking Callum Ritchie, third line center, then Goldman, fourth line center. It's tough because we're kind of like a tweener team. We're going from being a competitor to maybe having a bit of a tweener type season and then reloading for 2029-30, which is not necessarily what we want to do. The team has a bit too much of a rebuilder vibe, in my opinion here, with all this cap space and with these low overalls. We want to make sure that we have players who are ready to 
to slot in if needed. Like if Mark Stone gets injured and LeCarrie Mack has to go first line, then who goes up to the second line? I'm not sure if I'm totally sold on the squad as is, but I think the pieces are there. So that being said, someone who is versatile, who could be a center uh, right wing, kind of like a Sharon Govich here, is very interesting. But I don't know, no one really speaks to me that much. I don't want to force a move just to say that we make a move. That's the thing as well. On the other hand, we look at defense over here. Wierenski is interesting at that price tag, but in simulation, I don't know if he's necessarily worth it. A 20-point guy, negative 50 over the last two seasons. That's the thing as well. Adam Boquist speaks to me a little bit as an offensive defenseman. Forsling, Provorov, Haig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Goaltending. Uh, Spencer Knight is out here as an 89 overall. Drew Camesso. Wow. Drew Camesso. But terrible numbers. Oh, my goodness. I guess part of it is playing on bad team. I don't know. Career 900 save percentage, 3.4 goals against. Yikes. Yeah, not a good free agent class, I have to say. Yeah, really overall at all. Da Danil Tarasov asking for 6.2 million. Okay, so that being said, I did take a quick little look around the trade blocks around the NHL, and there is an interesting move that stands out to me. I was trying to look at players who would be high value with good cap hits, because we're pretty much at the cap floor. We need to get a little bit more. I'm trying to think of what kind of high value player could we get. And when I look around the trade blocks in the NHL, there's nothing much. There's Hampus Lindholm in Boston. But one that really stands out is if I go over to the New Jersey Devils, the team that we just faced in the Stanley Cup Final, they are conservative buyers, and they have Dougie Hamilton on the trade block. Dougie Hamilton is an 89 overall, 35 years old. He just He's coming off of a 27-goal, 73-point season. Ridiculous numbers. I'm not sure if he won the James Norris. We'll check that out in a second. He was a plus 12, still eating big minutes, 25 more than 25 minutes per night. Not as many hits, I guess, as in the past, but still blocks a lot of shots as well. In the playoffs, he had 15 points in 24 games. He was a big part of the Devils team, but now he's on the block. Now, when I see a good team with tons of good players on the trade block, I don't take advantage of that because really it wouldn't make sense for the Devils to be trading out everybody after they just went to the Stanley Cup Final. However, they only have really one really good player on the block here. Yeah, only one player at all on the block in Dougie Hamilton. Um, when I look at their defense as well, sorting by overall, if you take out Dougie, they still have one, two, three, four. So they have to get some more guys in there, but they want to have Nemeth move up, I suppose. Nikishin move up a little bit. They don't want these guys on the second and third pair like they did last season. Luke Hughes is going to grow a little bit. So if this is their top four right here, they can get some depth pieces or even maybe acquire another piece like from us. So I'm thinking like if they want to move Dougie Hamilton for whatever reason, they have only one player on the block, meaning that there's a storyline reason that could be there. He wants to move. They're telling him he's going to be in a reduced role. What, they just want to capitalize on his value as he's getting older, whatever it may be. I know we just said that we're getting too old. We want to get younger overall. And yeah, he's 35, but he's an 89 overall. Just had a crazy season. And when I think about what we could trade back, I have to say I'm tempted to say that Tom Willander could be a good piece that the Devils would be interested in. He w he fits their trade block. He is much younger. He signed on for two years as well. He's making half as much money, which would be good for a team like the Devils that are trying to make another push. And Tom Willander, as we've said earlier and in previous episodes, I'm not sure if he's ever going to be much more than what he is right now. A 20 point plus 20 guy at his best is still good. Blocks a lot of shots, throws a lot of hits. He has value. 130 hits, 110 plus blocks. Yes, very good. But after this next contract, I'm not sure if I want to pay him six, seven million to continue being that guy. At four million is one thing, but we need more scoring from our defense as well. We saw a big lack this past year when Quinn Hughes went quiet. The defense as a whole was just silent. We had no scoring from the defense this year. Quinn Hughes scoring 53 points was ridiculous. So he needs a little help back there. He can't do it all by himself. Bringing in Dougie Hamilton would, number one, give us a bit more of a cap hit, which would help us to get above the cap floor. But also, number two, just give us a better option on that right side as the number two guy. Or even could rotate into the number one guy and, and Hronik goes down. Because right now, if our top four is Hughes, Hronik, Hannafin, Willander, then Susie and Risto as the third pair guys, remove Willander, give me an 89 overall Dougie Hamilton, that makes Hronik and Hannafin the second pair. And that's a much more competitive look, I have to say. It is a short-term thing. Willander would be a long-term guy in theory, but I don't know if he's developing into that. 
while Dougie Hamilton would probably only be here for two more years, but he would give us a good chance to stay as competitive as possible. So I threw it in the Discord server. I didn't put out any names. I said, would it be crazy if we were to think about trading Tom Willander for a defenseman who put up numbers like this and is an aging veteran? Many assistant GMs saying, go for it. Yes, let's do it. So I gotta say, I think I'm tempted to send this deal over to the Devils. It wasn't one that I was really considering too much. I think we have more value in our favor, even a little bit. So I wouldn't mind even throwing in Bobby Stoll to get him off the team, because we know that he won't really have much room with Muller and Jansen and all that in the AHL. So we'll throw in Bobby Stoll. We could even throw in someone else, like Olsen, for example. Olsen, 77-25. He's not going to have room on the team. And then from there, we can take back some picks, which will continue to help the kind of uh, stockpiling of draft picks that we've been doing as of late. So can I take a second from the Devils, and then I send you back something the other way? Maybe. So what would the Devils say to a second round pick straight up here? It isn't sufficient, okay? Too far off. Third and a seventh isn't sufficient. And just a third. All right, trade accepted! Third round pick. Thank you, New Jersey. Tom Willander, good luck in New Jersey. And Dougie Hamilton, welcome to Vancouver. The multiverse of madness continues to f go deeper down the rabbit hole here. Wow! Dougie Hamilton of the New Jersey Devils. We just beat him in the Stanley Cup Final. We go out and acquire him now. We pull the plug on the Tom Willander experiment. We'll have to be conscious of that and draft defense moving forward. But now, a first, a second, three thirds, a fourth, a fifth, two sixth, and a seventh in next year's draft. And the year after, a first, a second, two thirds, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So we'll definitely play around with those picks when those drafts come. We have a lot of versatility to draft the guys that we'll want to draft. Tom Willander, best of luck. First, we say goodbye to Bobby Stoll. He was a fourth round pick in 2024. Had a couple of years in the AHL. Not really good numbers at all in a small sample size, unfortunately. So we have other people in the system now. We'll move him out. And they needed a goalie anyways. They now get Tom Willander in their system. A lot of value still to Tom Willander, absolutely. Through 325 games, he had 89 points. He was a plus 26, a first round pick back in 2023 in the real he world. He was here when we took over. We got him a Stanley Cup. He wasn't great in the playoffs, 11 points and a negative 11 in 39 games. Small sample size again, but I'm willing to say, let's pull the plug on him now, get two years of Dougie Hamilton, use that as a buffer, and hopefully acquire or draft slash develop some defensemen who will rise up and take the spots of Hamilton, Hannafin, etc. in the near future. Because as we said, if we just look at, uh, according to trade value, of course, guys like Shen, guys like Miknov, guys like Cook, will they be ready? Even Bouillon, of course. Will they be ready in a couple of years? We'll have to hope so. So big splash right there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome Dougie Hamilton to Vancouver, hopefully keeping us as strong as possible. Like I said, in a bit of a tweener type of team where we could have some experimentation. We want to have those strong performers that we can rely on to still get the job done. So Dougie Hamilton, we still have a lot of cap space, but he'll be here for two years. We can afford it, no problem. Speaking of afford, guys like Noah Hannafin could use an extension. If we're gonna be extending him, we'll have over 33 million. Atu Ratu needs an extension. See, I don't want to cheese the system because he's an 85 overall. He should be an 88. So we could cheese it and go, whatever, three years, five, four, four years, five million. But that wouldn't be right. Same for even um, the goaltenders. I bet Hunter Jones wouldn't want that much because of his low career numbers. Yeah, come on. The 900K for Hunter Jones. That would be two years, 900K. So we got to wait on re-signing these guys. I don't want to cheese the system too badly. But we will have money to spare. So there's a big move, ladies and gentlemen, Dougie Hamilton. Wow, was not expecting to do that at the start of this episode. Tom Willander moves to New Jersey. We make a move with a team that we beat in the Stanley Cup final, and that will definitely have big implications moving forward. Still, the question is, do we make any more signings? We are just about at the cap floor. Uh, boy, maybe we sign someone, just a veteran, just to make sure that the game doesn't re redo anything that we don't want it to do. Like, maybe Anze Kopitar sticks around as 13th forward in the end. We let him walk. Maybe he wants to stay in Vancouver. He enjoyed his time. Or would he say, listen, I want 2.1 million. I'm still good enough to be in the NHL. Tough call. Or maybe we go with a guy like Zuccarello, who's a lower overall with a lower ask. Uh, Crystal Tang is interesting, but we know that Jared McIsaac already is our, um, our seventh defenseman. Maybe Zuccarello then. Matt Zuccarello, I'll give you one year, two mil to be 13th forward. What do you say? Let's just add to the to the cap floor here a little bit. Aside from that, if we look at UFA sorting by potential, not much. Low top six, Jenkins, low top nine, a sniper who's undrafted. 
Um, WHL, eh, nothing special there. I think we have enough in the AHL anyways. It's maybe the defense. We could use a defenseman or two for the AHL. Cali Odelius out here, but he wants 1.2 million. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Ooh, Siegel. Who's this guy? 22. Greg Siegel. Okay, let's see if we can uh, sign him. He wants to... Okay, but he would take one year 800k, though. So what about one year max two-way deal? We'll see what he says to that. And uh, we'll get back to you. Okay, I guess the Flames just let him walk there. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Not too much to do in free agency. So I think at this point, we're going to go ahead and start simming to next season. See what the, uh, the, the free agents have to say. And then from there, we'll update the draft class for next season and then get to the start of the preseason. Yuri Ovechkin, new scout signing on. Great. Let's just see what... Uh, Zuccarello, extremely happy. Very good. And Siegel's on board. All right, fantastic. So the two guys we wanted are in. Are we just make sure we're at the cap floor here? Yeah, we made it. Very good. And of course, I almost forgot the associate coach. We need a new associate coach. So we could promote from within. Ryan Suter actually is an A-. Maybe we promote Ryan Suter then? Uh, what's, uh, what are the attributes looking like? Yeah, maybe, huh? Would that be crazy? What if we promote Ryan Suter? The staff chemistry currently 67. Ryan Suter gets promoted. It goes up to 74. All right, you know what? Let's do it. A minus? I think that makes sense. Ryan Suter, welcome to the NHL, buddy. We signed him, waiting for him to make it to the NHL staff, and this year's the year. So 74% staff chemistry, great news. Galena, Suter, Siegel, and Lowe. Uh, this guy can get promoted to AHL associate. I'll go out and sign an AHL assistant. But then, like, I, that'll just do be off screen. I just want to make sure that we update the draft class now. As always, we'll generate a random number for the draft class quality and generated prospect quality. 1 to 20 is low, 21 to 79 is medium, and 80 to 100 is high. So generating a number here, 1 to 100, I get 47. So the draft class quality will remain medium. And the generated prospect quality, generating a number, 32 will be medium as well. Makes sense. The typical year is medium, medium. So after a couple of years of medium high, we'll get medium, medium for next year's draft class. And if you're curious to see what the free agent staff pool looked like, there were a couple of A-plus coaches. Chance Ronick, 48% team fit for him. Kapusta, 48% fit as well. So I get very limited schemes. We don't know much about these players and if they'd even be in those spots. But it wouldn't make sense for us to fire Galena and take a total shot in the dark on any of these guys. Even Ramirez still out here as well. So we won't change anything for the coaching. Ryan Suter, welcome to the coaching staff. And that being said, we're ready to simulate towards the beginning of the preseason for year number six. So everybody eat well, rest up, enjoy your summer with Lord Stanley. And we'll come back together and get ready to run it back in just a couple months. All right, so here we are for the beginning of the preseason. First things first, we've got to set the captains. So we know that Quinn Hughes is still our captain, Elias Pedersen as an alternate. I think now that JT Miller is gone and we have to assign another alternate, I'm leaning that we go Sam Reinhardt. Vancouver boy entering his fifth season as we head into year number six. He's been here a long time. I think Sam Reinhardt is the guy. Feel free to leave any suggestions on that if you disagree, but I think unless something changes, we'll go Captain Hughes with alternates being Pedersen and Reinhardt. So now that that's been done, I'm going to go into the edit line move some players up and down and get an idea of what our lineup might be headed into year number six. Also, by the way, when we look at our unsigned prospects, I'm going to go ahead and give a contract to Niskala, 77 overall, 6'4", two-way forward, who we drafted in the second round last year in 2027, medium top six potential in Liga, 19 points in 58 games last year, no growth since drafted, still 77. I'm going to say let's sign him, bring him to the AHL, and try to maximize some chemistry for some growth with top line minutes. Okay, so here's how the lineup is looking to begin year number six. I wouldn't say it's especially impressive overall-wise, but I think there's hope when it comes to the simulation. Now, Ratu, Pedersen, and Stone on the top line. This is surprising. I don't know how Ratu could be an 88 overall, score 18 goals in the playoffs, then drop to an 85. I don't know what's going on, I guess because he had a 54-point season. But still, he's an 85, and hopefully he will sim just as well with Pedersen on the first line. And Mark Stone on the right side, who is still an 82 overall, but has dropped to AHL top six potential. So he'll likely be an 80 overall or lower by the end of the season. But he still has a couple of X factors, still a plus three on the top line. Second line, Owen Tippett, welcome to Vancouver. Sam Reinhardt centering the second line, and LaCare Mackey on the left. Again, none of them with great second line fits. This is why we had moved out Galena originally. There's a zero for the chemistry. Unfortunate, but... Hopefully they could sim all right. Again, Reinhardt, 87 overall. I don't know why he's down to an 85 for no reason. He had an average season, 58 points, 14 points in 22 games in the playoffs. I don't know why he's down to an 85, but all right. On the third line, Caden O'Brien is up to an 81. Callum Ritchie, third line center at an 80. And maybe we end up keeping Zach Hyman. I signed him as maybe we see what happens. We trade.
trade him or what, maybe we keep him. Because as much as I want Pat Colson on that third line, I think having another 84 overall in the middle six would go a long way. Maybe we can supplement it with special teams because he's been impressive enough that we want to give him a chance to succeed a bit more. But I don't know. If Zach Hyman's going to be a 40, 50 point guy as a third liner, do we replace him with Pat Colson, who, yes, we want to give more to after his great playoffs, but he's still like a 30, 40 point guy. Not that much lower than Hyman. I don't know. It's a bit of a tough call here. Anyways, fourth line at the moment would be Pat Colson. You got Goldman, who's still a 79, and then Misa Luke Misa up to a 78 overall from a 77. He's 22. He could still be first line center down in the AHL, but he's been first line center, or at least top six center down there for a couple seasons now. Do we give him a third season there, or would he just never grow? So that's the question. Does Luke Misa go to the first line of the AHL, which would be a very big help for Johnston, Misa, uh, Niskala. They have very little chemistry and very poor overalls down here in the AHL. I signed a 79 overall centerman to come and join the team from free agency. Do we send Misa down knowing that it might not help his growth? I don't know. Do we keep him as a fourth liner in the NHL, saying that he needs to be here anyways? Fourth line minutes in the NHL versus first line minutes in the AHL probably wouldn't be very helpful to keep him at, at you know, seven minutes a night or something, because already Goldman's getting not enough ice time and we have to supplement him with special teams. There's not enough special teams minutes to go around. So the way I lean right now, I'm going to go ahead and do it if you really feel strongly about it the other way. We can always give him a chance in the preseason, but as of now, when I think about what will our lineup be, I think Luke Misa is probably in the AHL, thus allowing us to put a guy like whoever, Zuccarello, Anderson Dolan on the fourth line wing, and he can be happily playing seven minutes per night without needing any special teams time or whatever else. So if we just say it's Anderson Dolan, I suppose, for now, just to put him there, that'll be the line. Still with the plus two, which is good. And Goldman, 79 faceoffs. Yeah, he would be the centerman. So that's the forward core as of now. On defense, Hughes and Hamilton would get a plus five. Ducky Hamilton still an 89 overall. Great news. The second pair, Hannafin and Hironik with a plus one. They had that crazy plus minus together a couple of years ago. Yeah, plus 34, plus 30s for both of them. And the third pair would be Susi and Ristolainen with the plus one. So I love the defense. I'm happy with that. The chemistry is great as well. Goaltending, Hunter Jones is an 84. And DeSmith has gone down to an 82 which is fine. I don't know why he, DeSmith jumps from 81 to 84, then down to 82, but Ratu drops from 88 to 85. No idea. But 84-82 would be the tandem. 13th forward, Zuccarello, then 7th D, Jared McIsaac. So down in the AHL, if we were to say, okay, Luke Misa is that first line center, that would mean the lines probably look something like this, but still not great. Do we get a new AHL coach? I don't know, because zeros in the top nine is not good. No one really has a good fit anywhere. No one really jumps out as having a really good fit on any line. K Kisikov on the second line is great. No one else really has a great fit on any line. Pedal on the second line. So that's the thing. Misa would get first line minutes, but no chemistry with Johnson and Niskala. Two guys who we also want to see growth from, but Johnson, we're close to pulling the plug on him as well. Tough call. Really tough call. On defense, Miknov and Shen, we want to see growth from them. Do we give them first pair of minutes in the AHL? Is that too much over their heads? I don't know. And Janssen backed up by Rainer Muller uh, for the goaltending. So a lot to think about in the NHL, both the NHL and the AHL lineups. We'll definitely have a lot to think about when it comes to the preseason. I'll do some special teams tweaking. But I really want to see these overalls grow. It's, you know, maybe it's all for nothing because the simulation is just fine. But I got to say, when I just look at this team on paper, I'm not very impressed. We gotta hope for some growth this season. Maybe it's a reset kind of year and that's okay, but I still think we wanna be competitors. We went out and got Dougie Hamilton. We still have Pedersen, we still have Hughes, we still have Hironik, we still have good pieces who wanna be here challenging for a Stanley Cup. So that's a lot to consider. One thing we could think about getting would be a third goalie. We had thought about Silovs coming back, but he ended up not going to free agency. He signed a deal with the Wild, a one-year, one-million deal. So we wouldn't be able to get um, Archer Silovs back. Just the trade value right here. Draft pick situation. Remember, if you just want a quick reminder, we'll quickly skim through the trade blocks from the NHL before we call it at the end of the day. Starting by overall, Anthony Duclair, Seamus Casey. Interesting. Some names on the block here in Anaheim. Seamus Casey, offensive defenseman. What has he done here? Eh, okay, 27, 33 points. And Trey. Keep in mind, young defensemen and or third goalies. We'll look at the goalies again uh, just after this. Uh, some younger pieces in Arizona. No one really that stands out in Boston. Buffalo, Calgary, Mackenzie Weger on the block there. Andrew Peak. looking at Carolina. Kutkin Yemi, Heinen, a few other names there for the Hurricanes. 
Blackhawks, younger pieces. Avalanche, uh, Tulipov, this young guy, he's a forward though. Keep in mind the defensive prospects especially. Goudreau, Marchenko, Wallman, Carrier, a few names here in uh, Columbus. Alexandre Carrier, good offensive defenseman for the right side. Okay, just throwing that out there. Dallas, Detroit, Cop, Rust, Zadarov, Bergeron, Costin, and McDonough. Edmonton, younger pieces here. Lepisto, Cheverry, no defenseman really. Florida, Verhege still on the block, and William Carrier as well. Verhege, 70 points last season. They want to move him. We have the money for him now at 9.2. It could work. Just who would we send back the other way? 75 face-offs. He could play the wing or center. I think there should be interest around Carter Verhege. LA Kings, yeah, no one crazy who stands out there. Minnesota Wild, same thing. Montreal Canadiens, Sean Couture, yeah. Nashville, Gustav Forsling, who just signed, Fabro, Hall, Larson, etc. Devils, Sharon Govich, Evans, and Yarncrow are on the block for them. Jake Evans, 84 overall, one year, one million. Interesting contract for him. New York Islanders, uh, another Brustovich? Is that another Br Henry Brustovich? Are they related? Okay. Uh, New York, Cormier, who's this guy? Luke, oh, Lucas Cormier, of course. We had him in our Penguin series, and he never really grew. 81 overall at 26 years of age. Left D, top six potential, RFA. Okay. Ottawa, nothing crazy. Philadelphia, Sanheim, Farabee, Shillington, Rosica, Appleton, Madden. Good amount of names there from the Flyers. Penguins, ooh, Gensel, Lazat, Norris, Novak, Crosby, Moser, Graves. JJ Moser is interesting. Yanis, Jérôme, Mosey. Uh, 83 overall, 32, 30, 30 point guy. Okay, JJ Moser does peak interest, I would say. Graves, Dumba, a lot of names from the Penguins. Okay. San Jose, Zetterlund, Mikey Anderson, Guryanov, Marcus Pedersen. More names of interest from the Sharks. Seattle, Vince Dunn at a crazy contract, though. Essa Lindell. St. Louis, Sagan, and Burakovsky. Tampa Bay, okay. Toronto, nothing special. Chandler Stevenson on the block from Vegas. He, another guy who could play center wing. Interesting. 85 face-offs. Yeah, he could be a good second-line centerman for us. We got Mark Stone from them. 103 points a couple of years ago. 65 points last year. Chandler Stevenson could be someone we keep in mind. Washington, Morgan Frost, Tom Wilson, Kuznetsov, Kraus, Yafalo, and Bjorkstrand. And Winnipeg, Masha So, and a couple other pieces. All right. Thinking about potential teams that could trade us a third goalie. Just looking at teams that basically have NHL caliber guys in the AHL. Here is Anaheim. Arizona has Harabel on the block, 89 overall, Michael Harabel, 6'6", six six, being uh, just relegated to a backup role, but good numbers, 89 overall, 7x7, seven seven. whoa, and Shesterkin's 3 more is 8.6, so yeah, the Coyotes would be looking to trade him, maybe not right now, but keep Harabel in mind longer term, I guess. Here is Boston, Buffalo with Prosvetov on the block, Carolina with Grubauer, Chicago with this guy Leonov, medium starter potential at 22 years old. Jet Greaves at an 82 here in Columbus. Soder Bloom in Dallas. Sebastian Kosa still here in Detroit. We were thinking about him when we got Hunter Jones, but they have Trey Augustine on the block. 86 overall Trey Augustine. Uh, 16, 21, and 2 last year. Not good numbers, but still an 86 overall. Signed only on for one more year here. Okay, Trey Augustine's interesting. Markinen on the Kings. Of course, there's Silovs in Minnesota. Peter Maracic on the block in Vegas with Anthony Stolarz also in the AHL. Also even Bobrovsky out here. This guy Malik at a 79 overall. Okay. Last couple teams here. Caden Primo in Washington. And that's about it. There are a lot of teams that had 79 overalls in the AHL, but I don't want to deplete any team's AHL system. They need an AHL starter, right? But I was thinking just teams who had 80 overall plus on the uh, in their AHL system or teams that had guys on the block. So that's just about does it for the offseason, ladies and gentlemen. Some massive, massive moves. I gotta say, I'm not a thousand percent confident in this squad on paper headed into next season. I think they'll simulate well, but I'm a little concerned with the overall drops. I'm very content with the picks that we got and the moves that we made. Especially bringing in Owen Tippett, drafting Bouillon, getting a good, maybe more of a quantity of prospects than quality of prospects. We had just last season had like those three second round picks. So this year we had later picks that were the lower league gems. So I'm content with the offseason. We had to move Miller and Kuzmenko, and I think we got as much 
much value as we could squeeze out of them. We got to think about a few things into the start of the season, such as line combinations, who's playing where, any potential trades, and of course, potential contract extensions. We have 33.798 million right now. Hannafin's wanting over 5 million. Ratu, I really don't want to cheese the system. Maybe we could do, I don't know, five by six or something. What would a fair deal for Ratu be after what he's done, after the, the playoffs that he had? Or do we just wait because he's an RFA, we don't need to rush it? Do we end up keeping Zach Hyman? I thought we were gonna just let him walk. Ends up that we might actually need him. Lakaramaki, do we sign him? We could do a one year RFA thing on him. Put Colson, do we sign him as well? We could do a three, four year thing for him at 1.75 maybe. And then for the goalies, Hunter Jones, we're not gonna cheese it at 900K, but maybe we go like uh, five by four. I don't know what, maybe we just wait a little bit. No need to rush it now, but extension thoughts, that's how it looks. And even the coaching as well. Do we want another NHL coach, AHL coach? Do we give Ryan Suter a chance and see what his fits would be? Galena got us that Stanley Cup. Do we just say, let's trust him? I am lean, let's wait Galena, but maybe at the halfway point, something changes. Simpson in the AHL doesn't look great with his fits. So a lot of things just floating around my mind. I don't mean to throw so much at you, but it was a busy off season. A reminder right here of what went in and what went out. We got some great picks. We don't necessarily have to use all of those picks to draft prospects. We could use them to acquire prospects who are on the block that interest us as well. So those picks can do a lot of different things. I'm glad that it just adds to our trade value pile. But aside from that, I think I'll leave you there, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave any and all of your thoughts on the off season and suggestions into year number six down here on YouTube in the comments or over on the Discord server, link in the description. As you saw in this episode, being in the Discord server and having the on-call AGM role gets you involved and keeps you informed when I have live decisions to make. So if you haven't joined the Discord server yet, we're over 600 in there. We're talking about our own franchise modes, fantasy sports, and much, much more. We'd love to have you in there. It's a really great, wholesome community and we're that much better with you as a part of it. So I'll stop there, ladies and gentlemen. Lots for you to think about headed into year number six. We'll want to do our best to stay as a strong team, but look towards the long-term future as well. What type of experiments are we running in the preseason? Who's getting a chance? What do you need to see from that person for him to stick on the team, et cetera, et cetera. Leave a like if you enjoyed the multitude of moves here in the off season. Of course, subscribe if you haven't already for all of our ongoing series here on the channel. Franchise modes on NHL 24, MLB The Show 23, soon to be 24, and breaking news live streams and analysis in the real world of hockey. Many more coming as the trade deadline is approaching in the real world. Thank you once again for taking the time to watch. I'm looking forward to reading all your thoughts and seeing you once again in the next one as we kick off year number six as reigning Stanley Cup champions.